Hello, this is Hot Indonesia, where the talk is definitely not cheap. I'm Dalton Tanaraka in Jakarta. Here is this week's HI Hot List. Holy terror, was the Jakarta attack a one-off or a warning flag? House rules, the new leader says, less recess and overseas junkets. Will that make any difference? And more or less, how many kids are enough? Sitting beside me are two ladies cooler than Japanese shaved ice. Yeni Wahid is director of the Wahid Institute, second daughter of Indonesia's fourth president. And I always want to emphasize this, fashion icon. And Rahayu. Probably not, <laughs> but thank you. Rahayu Sarah Saraswati is a parliament member, former actress, and faithful follower. Follows many good things. Hot topic number one, holy terror, the January 14th attack could have been a lot worse. Gunfire and homemade bombs exploded in the heart of Jakarta, and when it was over, four attackers were dead, with four civilians also victims of the Tamarin violence. Indonesia's top cop says the assault was a hastily executed backup plan after police disrupted holiday preparations. This was the first incident attributed to the militant group Islamic State based in Syria. Police Chief Bad Rodin Haiti also said that there is concern that there is more, uh, there are more deadly attacks could come as militants Indonesian militants who are training in Syria, Middle East, come home. Should we be worried? Of course. Should we change our lifestyles? I don't think so. I don't think so. I mean, um, I think what we saw yesterday was, um, you know, the Not aftermath. Not yesterday. The, sorry, couple, the, the, on the, the last week. Yeah. Last week yeah. Yesterday yeah. is a very sorry. Japanese way of saying. Yes. Come on in. Happened. Come on in. Okay. Yes. Come on in. Okay. I got it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what happened on January 14th? Yeah. It's, it's all right. I just have to explain. We do that all the time. Okay. Yesterday. Yeah. Um, few weeks ago that um, you know the aftermath of the bombings uh, showed how Jakarans came together and then you know proclaimed that we're not afraid of the terrorist threats because um, you know one of the of course one of the impact that terrorists uh, wanted to happen in the society is to instill fear and panic and but Jakarta simply just you know um, shrug it off absolutely and if, even you know uh, convince the world that you know, we are not going to bow down to well, it. Not convince the world, but convince the, the, the attackers, the, the right. planned terrorists. Because authorities say as many as 500 Indonesians have gone to the Middle East to train with um, ISIS and that their return could mean a, a, a sustained round of, 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 of attacks. Yeah. Well, there, there's a few things that, well, first of all, of course, con condolences to the families that were affected by the bombings and the shootings. Um, talking about no fear, uh, I think that was the, the first thing that definitely crossed my mind when I was hearing, because some of my friends, a couple of them were actually nearby, and they felt the, the bombs went off, they heard it, and um, actually, so I found out about it before um, it came, went into the news, and um, that was just getting out of the area where usually the bombs would go off so I, I i was actually quite you know there was a moment of fear obviously there's a moment of panic i think everybody started panicking and then there was a lot of hoax going around but we do have to say i mean what happened at that time looking at the pictures now yeah jakartans we have absolutely no fear because well, bombs I, went off and they went that. a lot of it is they, a lot of they, bombs went off and then they just and they, they went to where where the place was and they're just like watching everything you, you got to mix in a little ignorance because they could have been hurt if these guys of are more, more better trained they maybe might, maybe they'd be dead maybe ignorance yeah. in this case equals no fear or something uh, well, some dad some would some uh dad because they were there. Exactly. The, the wrong time, they were the hurt place, because, yes, it, yes. yes. We, had, we do have to say, sorry, people, please don't yeah. stand around yeah. to see what's going if to happen. If there was a next, second wave of attacks, that whole people crowd of people would, would have, have been hurt. Been yes. hurt. Okay, but, but let us. But Dalton, you know, there are two points, you know, but the, the point that you're trying to make before earlier, you know, whether we have to worry and but all these numbers of people coming in and, you know, you have to look at it from uh, relative terms as well, relative numbers, mm -hmm. you know, because we've got more than. Um, 200 millions of Muslims here, yet only 500 actually uh, interested in joining ISIS or even when so it's off a to join ISIS. It's a minority yes. number. Compare it to uh, uh, the numbers in the UK, for example. I get this from David Cameron when he visited here. He said that in the UK there are about 2 million uh, Muslims okay. and there are about 5,000 uh, Britons Sympathizers. who actually, yeah. Mm. So, you know, if you look at that numbers, you know, you look at uh, our numbers. Keep uh, it in perspective. Is very, we very yeah. small. Yeah. Okay. And the but second thing, second, second um, point is that uh, the government is actually very swift in trying to make sure that um, the, yeah. when they return, that there will be some measures against them. I mean, they, they're coming up with a, 
uh, terrorism, act of terrorism bills and stuff like they that. they got to confiscate passports. Yes, absolutely. That's, that's, that's a lot of debates that's going on as well in the legislation uh, in terms of how will we react to all these people going over there and coming back do we actually allow them to return because a lot of debate becomes to say oh do we for those who join um, ISIS over there do we actually remove their citizenship it even goes as far as that there's a lot of debate going on in that sense but where do you stand on that um, still thinking about it okay still constitutionally can they take away passports I mean I think that's a dilemma that many yeah. countries are facing Huge. now and, and <laughs> what do you do I mean what before, do you do I mean especially in Indonesia I mean even if you confiscate uh, passports there are ways of getting like yeah you can get one the next day the other thing. Yeah. but but uh, that's one way of deterring people to go abroad but maybe the best thing is just to send them send them off and and you're not allowing them <laughs> to come back rather than you know, sort of <laughs> allowing Lock them the roads for all this, yeah, yeah. Um, well, facing all these angers and yeah, then because you can't, you can't confiscate here. just because they're suspected of doing it. You yeah. know, that's a violation of, of rights, I think, in yes. many countries. Uh, but as well, another thing that you know, on the on the same uh, line of uh, you know what we're thinking of, I definitely want to ensure that. Uh, the intelligence agency needs they need to do their jobs you know but in this they, case you know, we've got to give well, credit you know i think what? i think no, police no, no, police true. did a good yeah. job i think uh, the intelligence guys they took preventive action with raids prior to christmas and new years yes. um, they arrested the suspected terrorist group so and, and their, that's, you know, that's, 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 their response that's, that's, to you know the time attack was good yeah, I, mean, I, I asked them i asked some some of the police officers that were present, so what what happened and they said well we're focusing on the president's visit to Chirbon. and then there's so many there are hundreds of ex convicts that we have to follow Mm. You know, and because and Central so, Chitabo and Central yeah, Java is so many, yeah, they've got so little uh, resources as well. Yeah. You know, to yeah. the, the no, I hands. think they so did a pretty good job because the the impact wasn't as yeah. crazy. Yeah, as the it response was good, and uh, they did show force. So yeah. that yes. okay, yeah. you know, what do we do now? I think we keep up the surveillance, which they, they're doing. You report as citizens. We can report suspicious acts. If you see oh, a guy absolutely. walking with a backpack and a, and, and a gun, I mean, don't just sit there and report it and then trust that police are doing their best to protect us, like they yeah. did on January yeah. 14th. And yeah. also keep track on illegal gun trade. Uh, that's hard because for the average person, but... No, 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 as in sp specifically, uh, you know, uh, the intelligence agency. Yeah, that's so very The border important. surveillance as well, because, you know, many guns are coming in yes. from us. Luckily, we don't have the gun well. problem We're that... Exactly. The U.S. does. Okay. Yes. Yes. Hot Indo will continue shortly. Will, will more in-session time mean more results from Parliament? Dress today? Thank you. It's excellent. I love it. Love is just the star. Apa kamu pikir karena kamu korban penganiayaan, lalu kamu berhak membunuh orang? to ASEAN today. programs cool people on the Indonesia channel
You are watching Hot Indonesia with Yeni, Sarah, and me. Here's hot topic number two, House Rules. The newly elected parliament speaker went to work immediately to boost his body's image. He got all ten political factions to agree to cut down recess periods from a month at a time to two weeks. Ade Komorudin also got agreement to abolish overseas trips, junkets by House special committees. This was all to boost productivity since... Over the last year, only three laws were passed, we're told. Only three. Four, apparently. Oh, that's 25% that's <laughs> okay. difference. Wow. Um, okay. Out of 12 months in a year, out of 12 months in a year, is, you, know. you guys had five months of recess, a month at a time, right? So you're only working seven months out of a year. Um, that's when, of course, members are supposed to go back to their constituencies right. and, and deal with their people. Um, the new leader will now get them for a little more than 10 months. So, you know, let's cut it in half. Sarah, will this help? Well, number one, when I found out how much recess time we had, I was actually quite upset because we do have so much work to do in terms of legislation and then we have to, uh, you know, look at how the government's doing their programs and, 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 and uh, you know, basically using the budget. And of course we have to use about two out of the five main um, in-session times for talks of budget. So in that sense, if you if you look at it, you know, two is already taken out for bu just budget completely, budget talks, and there's only three left for legislation, uh, legislation talk, and then there's a, it's a long process. Like for one one session needs to be completely on. In, in, if it's if it's a legislation or a bill that's being uh, promoted or passed on by the uh, parliament, then we have to discuss it in parliament first before passing it on to the government. And then the government needs to come back so to us. you're saying you could use even less recess. Well, you know what? No, 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 no. <laughs> Instead of on, 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 taking on away the, half of no, it, take away. On the, on, no, on the, other si on the other side, though, we cannot completely forget about our constituents. Of course. You know, I mean, the, I, I did ask, why did we have so much, you know, recess time? Because apparently in the past, the problem was that the constituents, and this is true, when I was campaigning, the biggest, biggest concern or complaint, I would say, that the people came to me about was that Where is my felt, representative? Where is my representative? Yeah. They're overseas. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> on those junkets. They're on the junkets, but, you know, absolutely. But no, no, yes. but that's, no, but that's the thing, though. If uh, Now I know about the junkets, right, for example. Um, per commission, maybe there's about two... Uh, working groups okay. and wait, let's, you can let's, let's only focus go on the recess once, time first we but go you can there. only go once a year and so it's not really that often that no, people can go but it. the impact on the trips is that you cannot uh, but you know talk about the recess <laughs> no, no, but there's so many uh, bills not being uh, passed uh, passed on because they couldn't uh, they get couldn't a quorum. they couldn't get yeah, a quorum yeah, because yeah. everyone was just away you know all this working well, group this particular commission. group was okay. away let's, somewhere let's get to the judge you know a critic might argue that it's not the amount of time spent it's the quality of time Correct. spent, Absolutely. right? Correct. So Absolutely. You, can, yes. you can make them spend 12 months, but they still might only get past See, five bills. The way, the way, you know, I'm sorry I have to explain the details, you know, so people can understand. The way it works is that even if we have recess that's like three weeks, four weeks, however many, much time, we're only, uh, we only have enough budget uh, to actually be there for about nine days during recess. So, you can cut it down to make just those nine then days. Then you got to put in free time. The, but, but but so what? What's however, wrong with whenever, that? Whenever, etc. You know, I, I, there's a deba there's a whole debate. And um, my point is only that yes, I agree with you that it is about the quality of time, not the not the quantity of time. It's also I, about I mean, discipline. You know, absolutely. many many uh, many members of parliament they simply don't come. <laughs> yeah. to the session. Oh, they we've don't, talked about that. We've talked they about that. They don't come and then, to the you know, sessions. They, they don't even go for the recess. And they don't yes. go to their uh, home districts even, oh, right? Absolutely. What are they doing? They're just overseas. <laughs> overseas. <laughs> no, Yeti, your, your husband was a member of parliament. Yes. And, and, and you had him home for five months. No, not home, but I mean, he was out. <laughs> did you guys talk about that? Did he say, did he express concern or did you express concern to him that he's off too much or what? That he's... He, he never took any of the uh, foreign foreign junkets. Okay, what I mean, like never, recesses, recesses. Never, because never, recesses. In, in our, well, we uh, said her well, husband the is actually in, in, in Gurindra in, in party, party, yes. party mm. and what? Yeah, we yeah. weren't allowed to go yeah. uh, overseas. Yes, and you know, uh, regardless of whether there's recess or not recess, you know, we always go to the constituency areas yeah. anyway because of that. 
you know, okay. uh, there's so many if, issues if, if that the, deal with. If the, uh, if the member of parliament is actually from, that's where they're from, the constituency, they would go home anyway. That's home yeah. for them. So they would go home every single weekend, but that's the question. If that's their home, why do the constituents still feel like they're not being Yeah, they want to stay in Jakarta. Okay. No, but seriously, on, on, about, the, about the overseas, I have yeah. to say, I have to say just one point. It had gotten out of control. Is that, is that, well, I did go once. I did go once. Where did you go? We went to Spain. Okay. For nice. the uh, for the uh, disabilities uh, persons with disabilities uh, act. Okay. We wanted to study what they're doing over there because they have a pretty good reputation. And in the you, EU. so you actually did work and you. Oh yes, course. we did meetings. And I trust that you got. I'm being. Funny, no, we but. did meetings and everything, but but we couldn't we couldn't do meetings the whole time we were there because the NGOs and all that that we wanted to see they weren't available. Well, these kind of trips are not us. the problem. Well, the no, no, that, no I, I want to say though. I want to say though that. I actually agree for there not being any trips. Because seriously, I felt really frustrated yeah. because of how some of my I mean, colleagues were acting. Sometimes all these trips, you know, sorry, because it's such a waste of time. It is a waste well. of time. And they're, they're sending it's their expensive. friends and their it's relatives. No, no, no. Not and then, you know, the when one in the recess as well, and recess time in yeah. the hosting in the host countries as well. So you couldn't really meet in the holiday times. They for the, trips. But, the, the, but what he, he's saying is different from the bilateral trips. The bilateral is probably yeah, about once a year. Yeah, special committees where you're this creating where a junket. You're creating you're something cre for yourself. Yes, exactly. Those should not be done. I mean, we, we heard the high-profile ones like the film festival thing. Instead of industry people, they sent friends who not even yes. tied to them. We, we talked about that. Yes. Um, you know, and of course, overall, the House has had but its to, problems. To be honest, but, but to be honest with that one, that's not the legislation. That's the executive. Okay. Oh, really? Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> well, or, or junk, junkets in general will do away with them if you don't have to do them. The House generally has its problems, has to fix its image. Of course, the mm -hmm. House Speaker had to step down. Mm -hmm. uh, he went to Donald Trump's thing, which we're going to talk about. And by the way, the, the my Freeport party thing, was the already against the junkets anyway before this guy. All right. Guy. Well, good step. But anyway, this is a good move. Let's see if it House makes a difference. Speaker. Yes. yes. Because the, yes. So finally um, agreeing with my party. <laughs> all right. Well, all 10 factions said yes. Okay. More hot into is ahead. How many kids are enough? your beautiful dress today? Thank you. It's excellent. I love it. Love is just the star. Apa kamu pikir karena kamu korban penganiayaan, lalu kamu berhak membunuh orang? to ASEAN today. programs cool people on the Indonesia channel you are watching hot Indonesia from Jakarta hot topic number three more or less it used to be big families were the norm three children or more were common in the 1950s and 60s but yeah. as the cost of living rose and population <laughs> growth became a concern the number of children per family shrank China even mandated, as we all know, in one-child policy, but one child only, that will end this year. How yeah. many is enough? Yeni, you would have had big problems if you lived in China with your three children. Yes. Um, what was your family planning goal? Did it just happen, or did you say, I want... We didn't plan. <laughs> <laughs> I love how, like, 
just, just let don't. a chance to, to let it happen. Let, let, let it happen. Let, let it roll. Glass of wine. Yes. But three is a good number yeah. for me. Three, I mean, that's three, more than the norm. Three. Usually yes. today it's it's two. So so. Well, because no, the, the government had a had a yeah. family planning program before that yeah. advocates for it's just two kids for family. Yeah. So you broke your own. And it was really successful. And President Suarez actually got an award. From um, I think the UN's uh, what's the UN's body is uh, concerned with this uh, yeah. population control. Oh yeah. yeah. How many? Some. You're you're in a family of how many? How many brothers? Four sisters? Sis uh, four girls altogether. Four girls, right? So that's more than you have right you now. Have three girls. Three girls. But my husband oh, is five girls. boys oh. in his family. Okay, so you so have a chance of having a boy if you go get another one. Uh, yeah, but thank you. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. She's so, but thank I'm you. very happy with my girls. But I'm yes. saying we all came from families <laughs> bigger than we families we like okay. little have. Sarah, my you know, mom is one out of 17. There you go, 17. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. My grandma is only one kid, one child. She was the only child, but then she had 18. What the? My she, mom is she, the oldest. She beat you by one. She would have. Okay. She would have had. No, um, actually, eight, it would have been eighteen. One was miscarriage. Oh no, Sarah, you you are a new mother. Wow. We all know you are a new oh, mother. Oh God. Only one, or ready I for more? I don't know how people. You know what? I I concluded women are given the gift of amnesia by God. Uh, you forget because, the pain. You I'm forget telling the you, pain. seriously, that day if people were asking, would have asked like, oh, when are you gonna have next? I would like. Hey, <laughs> So what are you you're saying? You're not gonna. Are you? You're gonna have four. Uh, I, I already had my amnesia, so I, I'm. I'm. You're I'm ready. Looking forward to the next one. Show when, oh yeah. But, but I'm waiting it's until. Joyful. I'm waiting until my boy is about one year old, and then we'll see. Okay, you know, I have one child, as you know, and, and we want another. But for it's an economic he decision wants for many. You hear that, people? Yes, <laughs> yes, girls. It's, it's an know, economic decision for many. Age. <laughs> for many people, I'm ignoring you guys. For others, it's um, it's a faith-based choice, right? You have you're dictated by your religion, whether you can or cannot family plan. And, and no, you can always family plan because you can do Catholics? the. No, you can do the timings. You, I mean, I mean, I mean, okay. What I meant well was birth control, active yeah. birth control. Okay, That's okay. A little You're different. talking about like what to take something for it. Oh, or okay. Do the, In but, Islam, but, actually, there is. Uh, it's it is allowed to have a birth control, as a way of. Um, uh, not preventing birth, but uh, what do you call it? The managing birth. Managing your family. Managing family. Now, I yeah. want to I talk about that. a few okay. things that are quite important here because <laughs> when I went to uh, the G20 summit in Germany, yeah. um, it was uh, talking about it's uh, hashtag She Matters. That was the headline, and um, they were basically looking at population around the world. Asia has actually stopped growing. Okay. They need to focus now on Africa. Africa in a few years time will be the Exploding, biggest population huh? in the world. But look, China's so, relaxing its one child. Yes, child and policy. Indonesia with less and less resources to support that growing number. Exactly. Of as well. So I think the focus is not necessarily on. I think we need to look at why. Why were we cutting it down? It was mainly because of resources. Exactly. Yeah. So if we're talking about how many you should have, that's everybody's your own right. However, my what I'm trying to say to my constituents, for example, if you cannot afford to have more than two, don't. then don't. Yeah. But it's more than just whether a family can afford to have more than two or three. But it's also whether a society can afford to have, uh, whether a society has enough resources like clean water right. for every citizen. Yeah, she's like, going uh, the macro you know, level, yes. yeah. yeah. So, you know, I, th I think very that, basic stuff. Yeah, well, then, so I, you know, just, uh, I think government should not be in the business of regulating family side, but it's got to do a better well, job of has, educating, well, if it educating has, if parents. It has impact yeah. on the way the dynamics of the society, then Correct. the government actually has uh, well, an obligation if, to if, think if about the If they the do solution. their job, if government does its job, it helps you family plan uh, better because of the very issues, the basics. Well, the yeah. government is obligated to provide welfare for the people. Yes, and that's so. costing a lot of money, that's which a limited I'm resource. dealing with in my commission. Okay, so no more children, <laughs> more, more. Okay, no, got it. No, no, no. I'm saying have what? as you're, many you're, as you're, you can afford no, and I'm saying the, you. the society. You said you want oh, more. Oh, as in, oh, as in personal, yes. as in he wants yeah. to say he wants yes, more. Yes, yes. Okay. okay, got it? Got it. All right, feedback time now. And let's hear about <laughs> what we're talking about next time. But for now, we like hearing from you out there, especially viewers out there in Amsterdam. Oren posted this on our Facebook page. I'm from Israel and keen to learn about Indonesia. Your channel is really helpful in that quest. Good to hear that, Oren. And you can also get to learn about some of the country's most interesting people, like the ladies I have here. If you have any feedback on what you've heard or would like to suggest a topic for us to tackle, please email us at hotindo at the indonesiachannel.com or comment through our Indonesia channel Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram pages. Final words, Ms. Yeni. We were faced with violent extremism uh, in the past uh, 
few weeks. But uh, we shouldn't forget that uh, apart from the violent extremism, there's also the so-called non-violent extremism in which people just uh, spewing out hatreds and messages of, uh, you know, hate and, and um, you know, negativity and all that. And I think the society needs to do something about it because if you allow the kind of things to, um, to go on, it's actually a breeding ground for terrorists to, um, to recruit the caterers. Thank yeah, you. Verbal terrorism, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Final word, Sarah. Whether you want to call it gun control, gun safety, whatever it is, apparently gun control people are chafing at the idea because it means maybe they can't buy guns. But to be honest, I am so happy that here in Indonesia we do not have the right to buy guns if you're just a normal citizen because then you won't be able to commit any crime with a gun unless you get the gun through illegal channels and which means that nobody needs to defend themselves using a gun and unfortunately we're seeing a lot of that in other countries and I know because one of my friends my best friend she lost her father through gun violence because a, uh, an 18 19 year old kid felt it was okay to carry a gun, shoot at everybody in school. That is not okay, and I feel that the world needs to stand together with this. All right, yeah, sorry to hear that. My final words, there is growing interest in the U.S. presidential race here as we watch televised debates and countdown to November. You know, the number of candidates will be narrowed down um, as the months pass, but as an expat American, I can assure my Indonesian friends, ladies, about one thing. You will not see a certain reality show businessman as one party's Joe, nominee. Donald Trump. Trust Donald me, Donald Trump. it's only a case of <laughs> temporary <laughs> insanity. <laughs> Are you a Wait, Trump? You know what? No, 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 no. An American friend of mine said, maybe, maybe it's a good thing if, if oh, Trump won the election. Yeah, for other countries. Do you, know do you know why? Because then maybe the Americans will wake up to that sad reality oh, it, that, and do something about it. That'll be it, too you know? late. No, actually, otherwise, my friends will literally get out of that country. Uh, things will be the I'll same. I'll renounce my citizenship, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I might, I might hey, that's do that anyway. That's what I was saying when somebody got into power. But I might, hey, I might do that. that anyway. Okay, that is Hot Indonesia for this week. For Sarah and Yanni, I'm Dalton Tanaka. See you next time.